This is Negatives, the series where we explore iconic military photographs, look deeper into the stories behind the images, and find out more about how they were captured. However, in this season, we will be exploring the impact of moving pictures. Moving images go back nearly 130 years. For the first time, events could be captured as they happened. Audiences were seeing things they had never seen before from all over the world. Alongside newspapers, moving pictures were now being used as tools to inform the general public. And during the First and Second World War, the public's fascination with newsreels from the front line grew. People were eager to see the newest films in cinemas and hear about the latest developments across Europe. The audience's desire to believe everything they saw, thanks to this new technology, opened the door to propaganda. Today we rule Germany. Tomorrow, the world. Film propaganda was firstly used by the Nazis in 1935 with their famous film Triumph of the Will by Leni Reifenstahl. This film depicted a strong Germany with intentions to become more powerful and aimed at weakening the alliance. Lots of the footage from that film was repurposed in this one, made by the Americans and British to counteract the Nazi message. 100,000 highly trained officers, the men who lead the Nazi regiments today. But Hitler didn't merely ignore the treaty, he tore it up. But we aren't actually allowed to show any of the footage from the original, as YouTube banned Triumph of the Will from its platform, claiming the video promoted and glorified Nazi ideology. This raises major questions about history and representation, but that's a video for another day. Let's concentrate on the history of how film was used during the Second World War. In 1939, war broke out in Europe and fears of bombing caused British cinemas to close. The closure prompted public outrage. As a result, within a month, most had reopened their doors and despite being a potential target, the public weren't concerned about sitting in tightly packed cinemas. Filmmakers were determined to show people the war instead of distracting them from it. Usually, the films included a fictitious story which gripped the audiences, with relatable characters showing moments of heroism and suffering. This is my car, may I hear something? Sunflower calling station control. Four bandits down. Four. Oh, good work. The men have escaped in class. No casualties. Repeat, no casualties. May I have permission to return? Over to you. Over. Sunflower, Sunflower, station control. Calling Sunflower. Return at once. Good work. The films were also an opportunity to aid recruitment and increase public support of the war. No longer do we fight wars for jealousy or greed, nor do we fight in anger. We fight because we must for just those things that we hold so dear. We can learn from the motto of the Royal Air Force, Ferrado ad Astra, through ordeal to the stars, through endeavor to triumph, through trial to victory. At the beginning of each feature film, cinemas would show a five minute newsreel. For some viewers, this will be the main source of news, speaking about topics around the world. In the European theater of operations, Allied power continues to crack down on Hitler's borders. Heavy guns force the enemy lines to break at Anzio. The government realized that the cinema was a powerful platform for propaganda and set its newly created Ministry of Information to work producing war films aimed to unite and influence the British people. Here's a record of one night in the working lives of 2,000 women. They're making a gun. Day shift is gone when night shift comes in out of the blacked out streets. The day shift occasionally leaves a message. The Ministry of Information also trained soldiers to become cameramen. 
These men had the important task of documenting military events, sometimes putting their own lives at risk. Cameras were becoming smaller, more robust and portable, much better suited to use on the battlefield. The combat cameraman shot on 35mm black and white film, which was 200 feet long. You could film around two minutes of footage on each spool of film. That meant frequent reloading and increased probability of dirt or sand entering the camera, which would jam the mechanisms or scratch the film. Most cameras needed darkroom conditions or a changing bag. Early in the war, it became apparent that audiences were wary of anything that might be regarded as propaganda. So the Ministry of Information and the government needed to be creative. An example of how they did this was the film The Lion Has Wings. The Ministry of Information tried to produce a documentary style film using newsreel footage that went alongside a fictional story to increase morale. This is Britain, where we believe in freedom. We believe that when the day's work is done, or when bank holidays come round, life is meant to be enjoyed by all. And we were trying to make it possible for everybody to have the time and the means to enjoy it in their own way. Using footage from the Nazi propaganda film to compare two contrasting worlds between the relaxed British and the Germans. We like to win matches, not wars. Although if we must have wars, we can win those too. But unfortunately, the new spirit was not universal. While we played or swam or cycled or walked, others preferred to march. It gives information about the war in Europe and shows the Royal Air Force protecting the British people from the Nazi Germany. By creating a documentary style film, they aimed to make it easier for audiences to relate to the story. They did this by using fast camera movements and imperfect shots, which were designed to mimic combat situations and the extreme conditions the cameramen were filming in. The film was shown in 60 countries and became significant as the first propaganda film which was directed by the Ministry of Information. The Lion Has Wings was the number one cinema attraction in November 1939. Despite audiences finding some scenes patronising and a blatant use of propaganda, the film offered the British people some reassurance. There was a common purpose in all films produced by the Ministry of Information, and that was to unite the British people and make them feel like they had a part to play in this war. There is no lack of men for the machines. Men who will prove themselves worthy successors to the great war aces, Lee Robinson and Ball and Bishop, and leaders who have the confidence of the rank and file, and men of experience. I hope this first episode has given you an introduction on how film was used during the Second World War. Keep your eyes open for the next episode, which will look closer at how the famous D-Day landings were captured by the brave soldiers risking their lives to save history. For all they knew, they were bound for France or Belgium or wherever their commanders had decided to strike.